Welcome to AppChasers.com. You might have noticed that iOS 8 was recently released. You might even have it on your iPhone or iPad already, but it's Apple's latest software for their mobile devices. We're going to take a few minutes to show you some of the neat new features within iOS. We also have a communications uh, video that you can take a look at, but in this video we're going to show you some of the user interface changes in iOS 8. The first one we're going to touch on is actionable notifications. Have you ever gotten a notification, maybe a message comes through or an email, and you're in an app using it, you'd like to reply right then, but uh, you have to switch over into the Messages app in order to reply. Well, now with iOS 8, uh, it allows you to simply reply no matter where you are using your iPad. No matter what app you're in, what you're looking at, even if you're watching a movie, you can reply right away without switching apps. We'll show you how this works. Let's go into the Messages app here. And I've already got a message uh, really to myself, but I'm going to send one. How are you? And we'll put our question mark there. Okay, how are you? We'll send that. Now I'm going to quit out of the messages and you see here we've got our notification that comes right up. Now if we slightly uh, pull down on that notification, we can send a message right here back. So we can say good, bad, or okay. You can see our quick type keyboard that's new in iOS 8 automatically tries to predict how we're going to respond. So we can say good, we can hit send, and now our message is back off. And here we are again. So that's our um, new actionable notification for messages. Now, if let's say you miss a message, um, maybe you're not using your iPad or your iPhone and you want to quickly respond, you can now do that without even going to the Messages app, but from Notification Center. You're probably used to looking at Notification Center here by pulling down from the top of your screen. Well, here we've got our messages and we can just slide over and hit reply. So we can, again, reply. We'll just hit yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is good. So we'll hit that and we'll hit send. And there we go. Now the same goes for mail that comes through. You can see here we've got a mail message within a notification center. We'll pull down on that. And you can see if I scroll down here, I've got some mail messages. Well, we can't reply directly from uh, the notification center, but we can mark a message as read or just move it right to the trash. So let's trash this one, and uh, we'll even trash trash this one too. All right, there we go. We'll trash that, and we'll go back out of notification center. So those are some of the cool, actionable notification features in iOS 8. You can quickly respond to a message just like that. Now, when you pull down on Notification Center again, you'll notice in the Today view, which is the left-hand tab here, we've got some events in our calendar. Now, that's default, and that's about the same as what we were seeing in iOS 7. But now we can add widgets to this view. That means that we can see small little previews of what apps are doing in the background uh, within widgets. We can add those widgets by hitting Edit here. And this is going to give us some of the widgets that are available. So for example, we've got Calendars 5. That's an app that we use. We can hit plus. Now that widget is going to show up. We can even remove the, the default calendar here. Get rid of that one if we've already got Calendars 5. We've also got a weather widget. Now that's using Yahoo Weather app, which is one that we recommend. We can also turn on Evernote, Reminders, Dropbox. Really, these are the ones that I have installed, but you may be seeing some other widgets that you can install here. So we'll hit Done, and now we've got different widgets that are available right here in our Notification Center. So we've got Calendar 5 showing a widget. We can add a new event right from Notification Center, and that's going to go into Calendars 5. We can get ready and add an event date there. We'll close out of that, and we can also look at some of our weather that's coming up. So really neat feature here, uh, just using widgets in iOS 8. So play around with that. You can always add or remove them by hitting that edit button. Play around with it and see what widgets you'd like to install. 
Another neat feature new in iOS 8 is the spotlight search. We've already had spotlight search in our uh, iOS 7, and that's just uh, activated by pulling down anywhere on your home screen. So anywhere you are within iOS, you can just pull down and activate your spotlight search. Now this allows you to search for contacts uh, that are on your iPhone or iPad. You can search for um, apps that are installed. But now in iOS 8, you can search for apps on the App Store. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, one podcast app that a lot of people like to use is called um, Downcast. So let's search for Downcast. And it's saying uh, in the App Store, it's available. It even shows us the ratings. And if we touch on that, it's going to show us right in the App Store that Downcast is available. So we'll cancel out of that. Another neat new feature is uh, movies. So we can type in a movie, for example, Dolphin Tale 2. We just start typing in Dolphin, and we've got our Rotten Tomatoes rating that's showing here. It's showing that it's playing in eight theaters nearby, and it's showing our show times of different uh, options that we have for seeing that movie. Now, it also shows us here on iTunes the first Dolphin Tail movie, and we can go straight into iTunes and rent or buy that. We can also search for different things. For example, let's say we search for cats, let's just say, and it's going to give us albums on iTunes. It's going to search uh, Wikipedia to tell us a little bit about the Cats musical. It'll show us some music that's available, and uh, it'll also give us some internet search options just by typing in cats. So let's say we just type, on, uh, click on the musical there. It doesn't even need to uh, open Safari, but it just gives us a little preview here right in Spotlight. So that's some neat new features here that are available in Spotlight in iOS 8. Continuing on in our review of iOS 8 interface features, Siri has gained some new capabilities, and one is the ability to uh, listen to and identify music that's playing. So I'll show you that. I've got a song playing right here, and I'm going to ask Siri what song is playing. So hold down the home button to launch Siri. What song is playing? There we go. So we've got a song identified here. We can also try another one. Let's say, um, all right, let's see if it can uh, determine what this is. What song is playing? And that's exactly right. So we've got our Big Giant Circle song. So some neat feature uh, abilities that are available now in Siri, and it uses Shazam to do that. You might have already used the Shazam app before, but now it's built right into Siri. Another neat feature in Siri is the ability to search the App Store. So let's show you how we do that here by holding down on the Home button. Siri, search the App Store for Downcast. There we go. It launches the App Store and finds Downcast. Now, if you have uh, apps already installed on your device, it'll also launch those. Now, this isn't new, but it's something that you might not have known. Let's uh, ask it to launch an app that we already have installed on our iPad here. Launch the PDF Expert app. And there we go, we've got PDF Expert launched already. In iOS 7, Apple introduced the new application switcher. You can access that, and you probably already have, by double clicking on the home button. So let's do that, and it'll show us what apps we have available that are open right now. But now in iOS 8, we also have our recently contacted people. So for example, I just I was just sending myself some iMessages. So now if I click on or tap the uh, icon here, I can send myself a message. And it opens that right away. 
Let's go back into our application switcher and if I tap on that again I can also FaceTime or on the iPhone if you're doing this you'll be able to call that individual. So some neat features here now with contacts uh, easily accessible in the app changer. Have you ever seen your battery life draining and you're wondering what app do I have open that's taking all of my battery? Well now in iOS 8 you can quickly see what battery uh, sucking apps are open and uh, you can close those. For example, if we go into settings here, we'll go into general on the left and then we'll go into usage right here. And now we've got a new area within settings called battery usage. So we'll tap on that and we'll see that our, our home screen is using 34%, messages 28%, and uh, it just goes down the list here showing us what apps we have open and which ones are taking up the most space. So if we want to close out those apps, usually it's the GPS apps that are taking up a lot of, um, a lot of battery uh, in our iPad or iPhone. We can go ahead and double tap and swipe up to close out those apps that are taking up space. So another neat feature to watch our battery usage in iOS 8. I want to show you another neat feature in iOS 8, and that's ShareSheet customization. You might not have heard of ShareSheets, but I can pretty much guarantee that you've seen it. If you go into Safari, uh, to the right-hand side of the address bar, you've got your ShareSheet icon, and that is what allows you to share the web page with uh, an iMessage or send it as an email. Um, send it to Twitter, different things like that that you've already been able to do in iOS 7. However, now you can customize what apps you share these web pages to. So, for example, we've got jw.org open here. And now we can go ahead and add different apps. If we tap on the More button, we can add apps that we'd like to show up in this share sheet that we can uh, share to. So for example, I've got uh, two different apps that I've already installed on my iPad. One is Pinterest and the other one is Evernote. So now you can save a web page directly into either of these apps. Um, I'll show you how to do that here in Evernote. So let's say we want to share this uh, jw.org homepage to Evernote. So we'll tap on Evernote here and it'll bring up this new share sheet dialog box. It'll say uh, the name of the website that we're on, jw.org, and it'll also ask us where we want to uh, save it, what notebook we want to put it in. I've already got one um, here as recipes. Now, that's not ideal for this demonstration, but we'll just save it there anyway. And now it's in our Evernote document. The other one I want to show you is Pinterest. So let's say we're on appchasers.com. And we've got our page up here that's showing that a new um, app has gone free, and that's by color for the iPhone. Let's say we want to share this on Pinterest. So what we'll do is we'll scroll back up to the top. We'll click our share icon, and this time we'll choose Pinterest. And I'll say, okay, well, where do you want to share that? Now, it's going to automatically pick a, uh, an icon or a picture to use in Pinterest, but we can scroll through these and pick the one that we want. Now these are all pictures that are right here on the uh, on the web page that we're referencing. So I've got one picked here, it's the icon of bicolor. I've got the board that I want to share it to right down here on the right hand side and you can change that if you like. And then we'll just say pin it. And now we've sent that to Pinterest. So some really neat features that are available now. Other uh, ones that are going to be available are 1Password extensions that you can automatically log into websites with a username and password if you use the 1Password app. So neat features that have been added in iOS 8 with the share sheet icon. So those are some of the new interface changes to iOS 8. And uh, watch our YouTube channel for some more videos on new iOS 8 features. This has been AppChasers.com.